MIT. Um, what I have here today is real-world challenges to randomization and their solutions. So essentially, when we're when we're looking at programs uh, that are trying to reduce poverty and we want to determine the impact of these programs, um, often the most rigorous way to do this is with a randomized control trial. But with randomized control trials come a number of challenges that you might face to implementing them. Um, but a number of these challenges can be addressed with design solutions. So in one case you have here, there's a study conducted in California on a home computer uh, program which distributed home computers to students in hopes of uh, affecting their academic achievement. And essentially what they did, it wasn't feasible, ethically feasible, to distribute computers to only one segment of the population while not distributing it to the other segment. So what they were able to do was randomize uh, via a phase in design. So in this design, uh, researchers distributed computers to half the population in the first year, and at the end of the first year, the other half of the population was able to receive access to the program while still being able to determine the impact of the program with an RCT. In the se second segment um, is with the SNAP program. So a lot of times with um, programs that are entitlements, you never want to restrict eligibility criteria that have historically been present for, for certain vulnerable groups. So one way in which you might evaluate these types of programs is through an encouragement design. So an encouragement design, um, the basis of an encouragement design is that you're able to randomly distribute a particular type of encouragement. This may be more intense uh, type of encouragement, so it's application assistance, or something as simple as a, a mailer reminding people of their eligibility and encouraging them to sign up for the program. And so in this case, you're not at all restricting access program for the control group, um, but you are administering this extra encouragement to get the treatment group to enroll, and you're over the course of the study, the control group is of course still able to enroll in the treatment, but are probably less likely to do so um, because they haven't received the particular nudge to do so. And in this um, situation, what you want to uh, pay attention to is whether the difference in take up between the two groups is significant enough to be able to average or assess the average impact of the program on participants. And then in the situation over here, um, it's using an example from the Oregon Health Insurance Experiment in 2008. And so essentially, um, what you can do in this situation is maintain access to the program for a particular group, um, and then throughout the study, and you're not using them to sort of randomize, but you're extending the eligibility criteria to a new category of individuals, and you're able to, um, in this case, if the program is oversubscribed, you're still able to evaluate the impact of the program on this particular group.